So today we're gonna be taking a look at a scenario where Pangea comes back. Now, I, this map was very hard to acquire. So I do have to give a quick shout out to one of the channel members, Connor the Gamer. Thank you so much for providing this map for me because I was unable to find one on my own. Speaking of channel memberships, if you wanna become a member and communicate with me via Discord or if you just wanna help out the channel, then there's an option to join the channel somewhere down there. Anyway, once again, we're gonna be looking at the map of Pangea and what would happen if this were to somehow form in the modern day with all of the modern day countries. Now, as you can see, some countries are a little bit weird, um, like specifically Italy here, who doesn't look anything like Italy. But the reason this is how it is is because it's Pangea. This is approximately where every single country was, or yeah, was during Pangea. Of course, humans and, you know, countries didn't exist back then. But anyway, if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. All the support is greatly appreciated. And let's go ahead and jump straight to the scenario. All right, so Pangea comes back, the world is confused, blah, 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 same old, same old. There is a lot of lakes in the world now, a lot of seas, you know, um, like up here, the Arctic Sea, not the Arctic ocean or you have the hudson well actually it's probably still the hudson actually no it's probably lake hudson or something the caribbean lakes the Agen lake the lake of biscay there's so there's a lot of lakes now but what you also are going to notice is that asia is very small and this could be due to projection in fact it most likely is due to projection but it's kind of hard to really see asia we have china we have mongolia russia kazakhstan and it gets weird uh I think that's Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Myanmar, and I think that's part of India. Speaking of India, where is India? Pretty sure it like broke off from like Africa, right? Oh, there it is right there. So there's India. And yeah, this is a mess. Uh, what is this? What even is this? Sri Lanka, maybe? No. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and assess some of the alliances here. So first of all, NATO. So this is approximately what NATO looks like, and I'm pretty sure I'm missing a country or so. But yeah, NATO is now just like the central area alliance. So there's no really, there's no oceans. There's just only the ocean. So I guess anybody could join NATO now. And we're going to be starting with that. So it's so weird. <laughs> also, I forgot Denmark, uh, but Sweden is going to join NATO in this timeline. It just makes sense. We also have some countries leaving NATO like um, Croatia, Slovenia, Hungary leaves, Turkey leaves. But for the most part, all the other countries remain because Russia is still a threat up to the north. But we do have some other countries joining NATO now. One of those countries is going to be Colombia as well as Australia, New Zealand. What in the hell is what am I looking at? I'm pretty sure those are just some of the oceanic islands anyway yeah and almost immediately the fact that the world shifted this much is going to create a new faction so there's going to be a kind of like a factionized world here where we have like the the west per se they are going to be within this kind of zone so as you can see it's already kind of outlined but the west will look something like this and then of course obviously they have australia down here here we have like the neutral ish kind of countries actually i need to expand that line so here's like the neutral faction it's not actually like an alliance or anything up here we have like the north african faction thing we have a Middle Eastern faction here. We could also get like Pakistan in that, Ethiopia, Somalia, South Sudan, probably not, but maybe. We have the Indian faction, or this, I guess the Indian continent. And really you could probably throw these guys in with the orange faction there. And then there's just Antarctica. So Antarctica is kind of its own thing. And then up here we have the the East faction of, the, of Eastern countries. So if there were going to be hypothetical wars in this scenario, you could kind of see how they would play out between the different factions or I guess groupings. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of those faction wars. Now, I don't know how a war would break out. I don't know why a war would break out in any case here, but one does end up breaking out between russia and the uh, the nato countries china is quick to join the side of russia as well as mongolia and kazakhstan and as well as i think that's iran afghanistan there's turkmenistan there's a new country there and then these guys here we have the caucuses hard to make out i think this is georgia there's azerbaijan this is another part of this is iran there's armenia so there's that we can go ahead and throw in uh georgia on the side of nato now for southeast asia oh uh, what is even happening here we're just gonna leave that japan there's taiwan so we'll do that where where is japan is this japan is that's the common where are the koreas at okay, we're gonna say that's japan we'll say that's south korea and then we're gonna go ahead and say that this is north korea so obviously with the countries being smushed around some countries lost a lot of land like japan and uh, some countries gained some land like i think mexico did some countries remain absolutely the same like the united states somehow and some countries don't exist like Ireland for some reason. Okay, well, that's a joke. Obviously they're still there, but like, they're not colored in, right? So the North and the South go to war 
and it's well i really don't know how a war would take place in this kind of weird timeline like obviously there'd be a land war over here in europe between the two sides but something we do have to factor in now is the geographical locations and the climates so for north america and europe it actually is most likely staying the same if we compare it to the world map here i mean this is like a very vague comparison but you can kind of see that they're relatively in the same area if not a little bit south but asia is all the way up north it's frozen up here the equator i'm assuming is like right here maybe a little bit more up so the more north the more colder it gets and that's kind of a disadvantage for the red team here as they are kind of supplying themselves in the frozen areas of the world now china is completely useless now um, this is where all of china's population is and all of this right here is ice so china being a country that really contributed is unlikely the united states takes out a invasion from over here in alaska we do see the red team take out japan and korea and that's due to their i guess uselessness nato manages to make a campaign into the caucasus with success and they start to move over towards kazakhstan now something that nato could very easily do here or i guess i actually know something that russia could very easily do here is supply some of their allies in the middle east to go ahead and attack the united states remember there is no longer two oceans protecting america they are right on the border of countries like morocco or mauritania these countries well actually aside from morocco mauritania uh algeria mali uh, niger these guys are not typically friendly with the united states they're more so russian allies so russia really could get these guys involved with the war and they do just that now this kind of sets things off for the, in north africa here because algeria joined the war leads to morocco joining on the side of america we have tunisia joining in with the blue team and libya in with the red team now everyone else will remain neutral here because they do not want to get well they don't want to get see what's happening right here they don't want this to happen to them the united states is florida is well all right anyway so america now having to withdraw some troops from europe is going to go ahead and start to invade into these guys these guys will also consequentially invade into morocco taking a lot of land and as well as tunisia but unfortunately for them europe is only well I, I was gonna say a lake away but they actually border europe so europe's right there and they're gonna go ahead and send troops in now this does cause a little bit of relief for russia as they are able to pull off a good enough counteroffensive against the blue team but one place russia certainly is lacking is over here in what would be siberia as alaskan americans and all their might and glory are crusading across siberia also naval war right here in the arctic sea lake thing large-scale battle i mean the only way to really get into this lake area would be through here in the barren strait between alaska and siberia other than that you actually you might be able to take a series of canals down to here to get into like the this area but that doesn't really connect with the ocean so unless there's like a big enough river right here connecting all of this together you're probably only going to get into this area from alaska and that means controlling this is pretty important what do you think the time zones of the world are like there's probably like four right i mean no there's there's four in the united states so there'd be like maybe 10 so maybe like there'd be one two three four five six seven time zones and you know maybe eight because time zones are weird like that i mean really this is so weird because like this is one face of the earth and then this is the other face of the earth i don't know anyway back to the war stuff the americans are certainly inserting their dominance in the middle east as the well morocco manages to get all uh, i'm having a seizure or something they managed to get all the troops out of their country and with the aid of the americans and europeans they start to crusade into north africa with relative ease now remember north africa isn't necessarily a desert anymore if we take a look at where the equator is which once again is probably like right there maybe this is all tropical now so this is tropical land um the saharan desert most likely not a desert anymore it's cold as shit up here though so uh yeah goodbye to that uh, short-lived not very powerfulness goodbye and now back up here to cold land where well the uh the blue team is doing magnificent things they managed to capture moscow which is the capital city of russia they move into central asia fully around these weaker central asian countries now i mean iran is there's no way they're strong i mean they literally got split in half it's just too disorganized for them to function right whereas the united states is probably perfectly fine which some of you may hate that but it's true they barely even lost any of their moves so like the u.s canada uh brazil they're perfectly fine every other country got shifted around in some way or another like bolivia these south american guys are probably fine not peru though peru actually looks kind of cool now but you get the point india is probably fine as well i mean russia is completely upside down so i don't even want to know what that would feel like probably nothing 
So once the blue team gets far enough north, we have Russia and Kazakhstan surrendering together. Mongolia will default out of the war and China, being the weak old country that it is now, will go ahead and surrender as well, leading to a blue team victory. Who would have guessed? This really had a lot to do with climate, so it really wasn't based off of like real life things, because as we know in this scenario, Russia and China would be a lot weaker than they are in real life due to how they were shifted around, whereas the United States and other countries that are allied with it would likely just stay how they are due to, once again, how they are shaped and where they are. All right, looking at this peace treaty, here we can see that russia honestly they didn't lose too much so they lost a lot of land over here in siberia and this is important land because once again controlling the entrance to this means controlling all of this finland got a lot of land estonia latvia lithuania ukraine poland uh poland also got kaliningrad which i forgot to give to them speaking of poland they have two lakes in them which is very strange and as for japan they got oh, i don't even know if this is japan but they got all of that south korea united with north korea got a little bit of land taiwan they didn't really get touched and everyone else is fine uh, Georgia, they became pretty large, pretty cool. And yeah, that's really it for what NATO does here. Now, I don't think they might add Morocco as a member, maybe Tunisia, Kosovo, because, you know, Serbia is not going to do anything anymore. And I think everyone else would probably end up staying in NATO. Maybe some of these like Nordic countries would leave because they're not like Russia's not really that much of a threat anymore. But then again, like Canada would probably leave, but they wouldn't because they're allies with the United States. Portugal maybe would leave the UK. I don't think they would have i don't know romania would end up leaving maybe which could leave to like slovakia leaving and czechia these guys are relatively safe they're not going to go to war with each other but i think everyone else stays all right the middle east um well the united states is a lot closer to israel now so that could be interesting also i didn't do anything with the north african countries let me fix that real quick all right well there really wasn't too much to do with it uh i guess spain can get some land as well i mean the land here really isn't too valuable anymore because it doesn't border the mediterranean sea which doesn't exist so uh, I mean, yeah, there's the new map. NATO's looking pretty big. Russia's gonna go ahead and reform the faction, which just got destroyed by the war. Uh, NATO and them, they're not too happy about it, but they're not gonna do anything about it because they really don't care enough to do it. So this faction reforms, of course, this is gonna go ahead and lead to Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan joining NATO. I guess I gotta actually give that alliance a new name now. So it would just be the treaty organization. As we're just gonna call it TO now. Uh, we also have Myanmar joining in on this thing and really all of Southeast Asia does because there's no point in not doing it because you're not near anyone else. India is separated into two, which kind of sucks. They probably, probably end up losing control over this and that would go ahead and join the Asian group. It's also likely that we could see some confederations take place between countries who once that like didn't touch each other like somalia and yemen which sounds really weird but honestly it might be able to work what is this who does this belong to right here what is that honestly what hold on let me think about this is that piece of is that a piece of pakistan is that what that is we're gonna call it that anyway now going over to south east africa we have some unifications taking place between countries like mozambique and tanzania uh, we even have Madagascar getting in on that. Uganda joins it, as well as Kenya, which I got those names backwards, but it's fine. Burundi, maybe even Malawi. Now, Antarctica here, it's interesting. Technically, it's not owned by anybody, so I guess it can be its own country now, but just kind of like ignore these lines. Wow, there's just a lot to cover here. I really don't know what to do next. Let's talk about Iraq. They're very long. The Persian Gulf doesn't exist. It's just the Persian Sea. Or I guess the Persian Ocean. So I guess Iraq claims that land. Here's Kuwait. Poor Kuwait got all crushed up. But yeah, I really don't know what other kind of wars could bring. You know what? Screw it. Uh, India versus Pakistan. Let's do it. Pakistan is not going to have any allies because their allies are all the way up here. And they also lost a lot of land. Or they didn't lose it. It's just kind of separated up like that. Which is a disadvantage, meaning that India has the upper hand here as they push in and take Baghdad. Or not Baghdad. Uh, Islamabad. And... <sighs> Well, they, uh, they lose the war. Uh-oh. Now, realistically, India and Pakistan could never unite. But since this is Pangea, anything is possible. India unites with Pakistan. And then we have this part of Pakistan joining in on this weird Middle Eastern Union, which Ethiopia goes ahead and joins. Uh, realistically, they wouldn't join, but this is Pangea, so screw it. We also have Djibouti and Eritrea joining. And this kind of makes up this weird, cool-looking South Arabic East african central asian country which don't think that's even possible but it is because it's pangea saudi arabia would have to unite with qatar the uae and um that thing it just has to happen i mean they also would end up probably uniting with oman because they're landlocked now they can't touch the ocean the oil supplies if we go ahead and draw the equator again yeah oil supplies are usually over here right they're over here above the equator which the equator on this map is like that maybe a little bit more south but yeah they're a tropical country now so oil no gone bad 
If you want to find oil, go to Greenland. And honestly, just I'm not too sure what else would happen here. It's a very strange scenario. I mean, of course, when you think about world wars and worldwide conflicts and stuff, you think about like the United States versus Russia or China or NATO versus the CSEO or NATO versus Russia and China or like a total war scenario between Western and Eastern countries and countries aligned to certain factions. But here the East is nerfed, which means the West has dominance purely due to the United States not losing any land. Um, and Russia and China, obviously they lose land and Africa becomes weird tropical area, kind of maybe deserty down here. Uh, Australia's cold, South America's everything. That is, yeah, this is weird. Let me know if you guys would want to see anything else with the Pangea map. This was an interesting scenario to do. It's something that I've been wanting to do. And I've finally been able to execute it once again, thanks to Connor the Gamer, one of our channel members. And yeah, so let me know in the comments if you want to see anything else with Pangea. Maybe like a World War III scenario or like a total war scenario. Something that I've already done in another video, but transferring it over to this map and seeing how it plays out differently. Something that we could do. Just let me know once again in the comments. Thanks for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. And of course, thank you to all the super fans, which include Matthew Newman, Yam Yam, Kali Speaks Plays, Shadow Gamer Z, Deva Edits, Mr. Bonk7, Hammer Toad45, Patrick Clauser, Connor the Gamer, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Poland Country Ball, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, DW Cool Dude, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.